Hello, Expert VA community. Hey, you can't get enough of a good thing. Ted Google and I are back here for the second time today with my second amazing expert virtual assistant interview. We have Edie Clark here with us today. Hi, Edie, and oh my Hi. gosh, I had to have a conversation with Edie before we got started mm -hmm. here. But what the heck she has done to look as beautiful as she does. She always looked amazing, but now she is literally glowing. <laughs> Look at that smile. Oh my Thank gosh, you so you're right. amazing. <laughs> I appreciate that, Kathy. Thank you so much. And it's good so to Edie be and I have known each other for hmm, like six or seven yeah. years mm -hmm. now. And it has been just a really fun ride. She took, I think it was my second expert VA training class. Mm -hmm. And it was a group class at that time. And it was so much fun. We had a wonderful group. And Edie is the video specialist that I use to this day mm -hmm. at anything I need video done. So Edie, let's start by having you introduce yourself and talk a little bit about how long you've been a VA and why you decided to start your VA business. Okay. Um, well, for everyone who doesn't know me, my name is Edie Clark, and I am a video and YouTube strategist, and I help my clients engage with their audience and create brand awareness for their business by providing them with video and YouTube strategies so that they can get seen by their clients, and I also provide them with video editing services as well. Um, when I first met Kathy, this story is actually quite interesting, and I always talk about it because if it wasn't for Kathy, I wouldn't be doing what I'm doing, in all honesty. When I met Kathy, I had been a VA, if you want to call it that, for probably about four or five months. I had quit my job, which I labeled as the worst job I'd ever had in my entire life, um, and decided that I was going to start a VA business not having any clue of what that meant and what that involved. And so for the first four or five months, I was just sort of floundering around trying to figure out what I was going to do. And I just assumed that what I was doing in my nine to five, I would do from the comfort of my own home and do it for everybody else. Well, that didn't work out because I didn't know what to do. I didn't know how to market myself. I didn't really know and have all the skill sets that I needed to in order to actually become an entrepreneur. So I came upon Kathy, I think it was at a VA Virtuosos or VA networking event. Mm -hmm. And she was giving away um, a free one hour session with her. And I was like, please pick me, please pick me. She picked me, we had our session. And in that first, um, actually, I think it lasted longer than an hour, if I remember correctly. In that first session, um, Kathy asked questions that I had never asked of myself. And it made me realize that I really needed to do some more deep thinking in terms of what is it that I really wanted to do. And so she wanted me to sort of tell her what were the things that I was passionate about, what did I enjoy doing, even if it didn't have anything to do with a job that I actually got paid for. And so in the list of things that I told her, I told her that, you know, my deep rooted passion has always been video ever since I was a teenager. And I go on and on and on on this story. And she's like, that's what you should do. And I was like, for real? I was like, no way is anybody going to pay me to be a video virtual assistant. <laughs> so, you know, I took her advice and I ended up starting my business as a VA and um, it has been the best decision that I've ever made. And I actually started out at a time where there weren't a lot of other video VAs. And so that made me a little apprehensive and I know Kathy has talked about this to you guys in terms of, you know, comparing yourself to others and being afraid of not having credentials and things of that nature. And that was all of the things that sort of befell me where I just felt like, well, I didn't go to film school. I don't have, you know, I didn't come directly from a job that was doing this. So who am I to be talking about this? And you know, after coaching and talking and talking for a longer period of time than she should have been talking to me about this, I yeah. finally acknowledged that I knew enough and I knew a lot about what I was doing and that I could actually call myself an expert and that I could really go out there and be able to put myself in front of clients and help them solve their problems that they needed, which, you know, revolved around 
just trying to figure out what kinds of videos they should use, how to create those videos. And most importantly, now I focus a lot more on YouTube and how you can really use YouTube to benefit your overall marketing for your business. So I thank you, Kathy, again and again and again. <laughs> Edie, you, you know, um, you've hit on so many things that pretty much every woman that I've ever helped become a high paying virtual assistant has struggled with, which mm -hmm. are, you know, I'm not really an expert. Yes, you really are because you know more than anybody else in this industry knows about this. You know more than your clients know, which is the primary thing that's important. Right. And then the other thing that you mentioned, which, you know, really has just in the last couple of months come to the forefront of something that we all struggle with who came from the corporate world, which is 99.9% .9 of VAs. We came from the corporate world in some way, which is we think what we did in the corporate world because we were mm -hmm. so good at that there translates directly into working as a VA and it doesn't. Right. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. we really do have to learn how to get clients and, and all that. We're not, uh, we're not automatically jump in and can be super successful at being a VA just like we were in the corporate world. We have right. a little bit of a learning process to go through, mm -hmm. but it's fast. You can quickly mm -hmm. learn it because you already have that really good background. Right. And it's yeah. so interesting that you say, well, I didn't go to this school and I don't have this degree, but you actually worked in Hollywood even. Well, yeah, but I didn't, <laughs> I didn't, um, you know, I wasn't a film producer, I wasn't, you know, a director or anything like that. So I didn't think that from that perspective, I could be in the position that I was in talking to people. And then also, I didn't know that much, actually anything about YouTube when I first started. So that was what I really needed to overcome. And I think that was the, the aspect of it that was more um, I had more fear with regards to not really knowing enough about it. But like you said, I knew more than my clients and that should have been enough. And in the very beginning, I couldn't grasp that. It took me a minute before I really understood that. Well, now you know more than anybody yeah. I know about all of this stuff. Right. And not only do you know it, but you're really good at helping people like me who are very technologically challenged, number one, uh, literally Edie will send me some thing and tell me how to do something. And I'll be like, could I please just pay you to do it? Because I still can't figure it out, <laughs> which I greatly appreciate. And number two, wait a minute, I forgot what number two was. Oh yeah. So here's something that I think you find with a lot of your clients, Edie, which is they're afraid to be in front of the camera. Yeah. And I was very, very, very afraid to be in front of the camera. Mm -hmm. And he just gently kept helping me, helping me, you know, nudging me gently towards it. She would put, you know, photos up first. All right, I'll get a video done with just photos <laughs> for you. <laughs> yeah. And then finally, I did a Facebook Live and um, just took off from there because Nobody cares what you look like, right. you know? I mean, thank God, because if they did, they nobody would ever watch my videos. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think But, that's you know, not, people yeah. like the real people. Yeah, yeah. Do you I want to talk that, a little bit about that, about, you know, what you help your clients overcome, the struggles that you're helping them overcome? Yeah, when it comes to being in front of the camera, I can relate to that as well, because in the very beginning... Um, I probably did maybe four or five videos where I was featured in it, but it wasn't something that I was comfortable doing. So I reverted to my go-to type of video, which was a screencast or screen recording video where I recorded the screen. And so you just heard my voice. And it was easy for me to do that because in the vast majority of the videos that I was creating, I was showing you how to do something, how to you know, use YouTube or how to use a specific type of app. So it was sort of like a really good out for me not to be in front of the camera. And even though I came from a background where I was familiar with the industry, 
it, I wasn't the on-camera talent. And that was not something that I was ever comfortable with. And I ran when I saw a camera. So I totally can relate to clients that aren't interested in doing that. However, I have to say the vast majority of my clients do not have that fear anymore. And I think they don't have that fear for the same reason why you don't have that fear. And it's because of Facebook Live. And they've now realized the impact that Facebook Live has on just their feed, the, just their posts being able to be seen in the news feed. And so they're much more comfortable, especially since with Facebook Live, you have the option of doing it on your personal page where it's all going to be people that you like, that you like and know and love or <laughs> a specific group. You know, so you're not it's not like Periscope where you were doing it and like you didn't know who the heck was going to come in and what kind of garbage they were going to say while you were live. And so that was a little more like, oh, my God, I don't think I want to do that. But when it came to Facebook, I think everybody was sort of like, OK, this is what I got to do. Let me go and do it. Whereas just doing videos for their business, they weren't as open to. But now they're 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 getting that way. And so um I still will tell people if there are people out there that are still a little apprehensive, I still would recommend do some kind of video, whether it's a PowerPoint video or you can do a screencast video if you're teaching and you're doing something instructional or another um, go to type of video for me was using what's called stock footage or stock images. And that's where you get royalty free images and footage that you're not in, you just, you know, pay a subscription or you pay for it. And then you use that footage in your videos. But I have to warn not to resort to using videos that you're not in because people nowadays are expecting you to be in your videos. And so it does give credence to that no like and trust factor a little bit more than if you're not in your video. So for me, what I'm doing a lot more now is even though I may be sharing my screen and showing you how to, you know, do whatever, um, unless it's a really quick video that I'm doing on the fly, I try to make sure that I'm in the lower right corner as I'm instructing you, just so that there's going to be some sort of presence. If I can't do that, then I'm going to do some sort of an opening, at least on it, so that you can see me and then I'll cut away to whatever it is that I'm teaching. And that just allows you to connect more with your audience. And I think people that are using live streaming can relate to that because they can see the engagement that's happening as they're doing their live streams. So just imagine that happening when you put your video on YouTube and people are going to be able to engage in it, even though it's not a live type of engagement, they're still going to be able to engage. So that's what I, recommend to my clients now, but not a lot of them are afraid of being in front of the camera anymore. Well, one of the things that has really helped me on so many levels, personally, in my business, and EDI really give you all the credit for helping me with this. And you, I don't even know if I've ever told you this, but thank you, because I was hiding behind an old picture of me from like, I can't even tell you how long ago, mm -hmm. where I looked, well, I was 70 pounds lighter, I had my hair still colored dark, and nobody knew what I actually looked like, because that was the picture I had out there. Mm -hmm. And after I went gray, and I had aged, you know, 15 years and 40 pounds heavier, mm -hmm. um, I was just, I was so embarrassed. Oh my gosh, people are going to ridicule me. They're going to think I'm an old grandma. Nobody's going to want to listen to me. And you really helped me overcome that. And, and you, just like you were just talking, people want to see the real you. Mm -hmm. They want to know, like, and trust you. Right. Not this pretend picture of who, you know, you were right. 20 years ago. Right. And it has made me feel so much more real so much happier with myself, my life, my confidence, everything, which I never would have believed in a million years That's in perfect. doing these videos and, and actually putting the real me out there. So thank you, Edie, for that. And I recommend it to anyone. Number one, work with Edie. She mm -hmm. knows what she's doing. She can help you overcome this. Um, and number two, 
uh, have the confidence to be the real you because that yeah. that is really who people want to see. Yeah, yeah, and I think um, I think you've said this in in one of your um, videos that I've seen where we tend to get so I guess it's our ego where we get so wrapped up into ourselves that we don't really look at what someone else is seeing. And so when you're so fearful of being on camera, oh, I don't like, you know, the way I look, I don't like the way I sound, I don't like this, that, that's all about you. That's all about your ego. It has nothing to do with what your potential clients are seeing. And so I think if we let go of that and we recognize the value of what it is that we have to share, and we focus on that, we focus on the customer, we focus on our audience, as opposed to putting all the focus on us, I think that you can get over that hurdle a lot easier and a lot faster. Because in 2000, well, 2017 is almost over. And can you believe it? I know, it's scary that it's gone by so quickly. But the fact that we're almost at the end of 2017, and we're about to crest into 2018, there should be nobody that has a business that's not using videos. There's no one should be saying, oh, I'm not doing it because of some made up reason. You need to do like I have gray hair and I'm fat. Right. (laughs) Yeah. Because nobody frankly cares. There are people across all backgrounds. They look all different ways. They have, they weigh all different weights and they are on camera. So that is not an excuse, especially if you have something of value that you're holding on, actually you're holding on to it for yourself if you're not putting it out there and sharing it. And so you really need to make sure that you're not focused on you and that you're focused on your audience and your um, clients more so that you can get more comfortable in, in doing this. And I think like what you said, There is a freedom. Now, I'm not going to say it's a piece of cake and it's a cake in the walk, you know, a walk in the park to do video, particularly live video can be nerve wracking because especially when you start up and there's nobody on and you're like, okay, is anybody going to come on? And oh my God, I'm talking to them, you know, and that again, going into yourself and you're not recognizing there are going to be replay viewers that are going to be watching this. So you need to be talking to them. And so that's a thing that you have to constantly say in your head every single time that you're about to go live. And so I tell people to actually live stream before they start recording videos for YouTube, because to me, this gets rid of all the nerves a lot faster. And so it's a lot easier for you to then just delve into doing videos for your YouTube channel. Because doing videos for YouTube and doing videos for Facebook or any live streaming platform are actually different. And you should not, you can repurpose your videos depending on the topic, depending on the length, but you shouldn't assume that every single live stream is going to be successful as a video on YouTube. It's all gonna be boiled down to what your topic is Um, how much interaction you're doing in the video, because if you're talking to the audience a lot, that's going to be distracting for YouTube because YouTube's not going to see the chat. Oh, yeah. So they're not going to be able to, unless you get at the point where you ask the question that's being asked, and then so you're repeating it and then you're answering it, then if that's, if you're that professional and you got it that way, then yeah, those, those will work. But, um, but not all live streams will work for that platform. So I recommend that in addition to repurposing your live streams, that you also create custom videos for YouTube because that's going to help you in the long run. They get found for longer periods of time than Facebook. Edie, I am just blown away by all the gems that you're dropping on us today. And so I would love for you to share right now before we go any further, how people who hear you and are like, I have got to work with this lady. How can they get to know you more, uh, get a call scheduled with you, get on your calendar, whatever they need to do to start working with you. Okay. Well, you can go over my website. My main website is down at the moment, but you can still go to virtually forward slash new hyphen services. 
and you'll be able to see all of the services that I have on there. You can also book a call with me from that page. And then I also have an about page that that's linked to that has a freebie for any of you who is struggling with just trying to figure out what kinds of videos you should be creating. I have a workbook that has 34 different video ideas that you can create for your business. And that download is on the about page. And you guys, I have been working with Edie for a couple of years now. And, and believe me, most of the time she has been dragging me, kicking and screaming. <laughs> but now now I'm fully into it. I signed up. She's got a subscription mm -hmm. service, membership service I signed up for. So now I have no excuse but to get all of this done every single month. So I highly recommend that you check her out. Yeah, so, Edie, I can we talk just a little bit more about... Um, the services that you offer, you've touched on a lot of things already, but um, what, what's the most, what's your favorite thing to provide for clients or what's your most popular service? Well, my personal favorite thing to do is to edit. I love editing. I could sit down and edit all day, all night. Um, so but edit video, editing video. Yeah. Editing video is my most favorite. It allows me to be creative. It's um, even though it's a very solitude type of um, job, it is something that I've really always treasured for quite some time. Um, but the services that I, in addition to editing services, the services that I offer right now, I actually have a special going on on my Embrace YouTube channel manager. And basically what that is, is if you either have a channel, but you haven't really been doing anything with it, or maybe you're about to start a channel because you've now decided this is the time you really want to get focused. And I highly recommend it since this is the last two and a half months ish to 2017. You want to get a fresh start for 2018. Start now. Don't wait until January to get right. your channel going. Um, I do have a special where I'm going to create your channel for you. I will upload your um, welcome trailer. I will optimize your channel, which just basically means I will add in all of the keywords that I need to so that your channel can get found. I will also do what's called sort of like a uh, YouTube audit. I will look at your channel if it exists already, tell you what's wrong with it. And then I'll also do a competitive analysis where I'll compare your channel to at least three to four others so that you can see what else is going on with your competition. And in addition to that, I'm actually, there's a special going on until the end of the month where I'm going to edit your welcome trailer for you. So all you have to do is actually create it. And I have a script template that I can provide to you. You film it, I'll edit it. And that special is going on until the 31st. And the way that you can get to that, and this is for either if you're doing it for yourself as a VA, or if you want your client to get with it and get, you know, Get Love more, it. As, as videos are concerned. So that's bit.ly, that's B-I-T dot L-Y forward slash embrace YouTube bonus. And so if you go there, you can um, get the bonus, which is the uh, welcome trailer. And what I would like to also offer, if anybody wants to post either now on the live stream or on the replay, if any of you VAs think that you might have a client that's interested, please let me know because I will give you an invite to my affiliate program so that you can get paid when I get paid, which I think is a pretty <laughs> good deal. <laughs> so if you're interested in my affiliate program, just put your name in the comments below or say I'm interested, whichever, and then I will um, send you a message and I will get you signed up for the affiliate program so that you can get your clients enrolled in this because this is really like I said we're about to get into 2018 we need to get with it we need to really be on point when it comes to getting as much visibility as we can in our business and I am not perfect so I'm going to be doing this along with my clients really stick sticking to a schedule it's really important that we start to get visibility and um, use YouTube for all it's worth because the main difference between YouTube and Facebook is Facebook may give you a lot of views. Like if you do a live stream and then maybe a few hours or the next day you scroll, you see, oh, I got 500 views or I got a thousand views. 
That's great. But come a week from now, how are you going to find that? You're right. going to be scrolling and scrolling and scrolling, and you'll be lucky if you find it. So therefore, nobody else is going to be able to find it. Whereas on YouTube, you post something today, it can get found tomorrow, next week, next month, next year. So that's really the advantage is that you want to get found by people that need you today, as well as who are going to need you months and years from now. And so that's the main reason why you need to really have a presence on YouTube. And I help you and your clients understand the, the premise of YouTube and how it works for you and what you need to do to position yourself so that you can get that visibility. And Edie, you kind of mentioned this in passing, but um, I think YouTube is fabulous not only for VA's clients, but also for the VA's themselves. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Can you talk a little bit about that? Yeah, um, VAs can use it mainly because in your business or in our business, we need to show our clients that we can help them. And so the number one reason why people are going to search on the web or even go physically and search into YouTube for things is because they're trying to solve a problem. They have some pain point that they need to solve. And you know what your client's most stressed pain point is. So instead of waiting for, for, you know, some miraculous, whether it's through referral or whatever other things that you're hustling and doing so that you can get your leads coming in, instead of waiting for someone to contact you on the phone or by email or however, and asking you those questions, why not try to get as many people to solve their problems as possible by providing the same answers that you're getting, do a, a video on that and put it up on YouTube, make sure that you've optimized it, that you've added the correct keywords that your ideal audience is using. And then you create that video, upload it onto YouTube, and then it can get found by people that you didn't even know needed you. And so if you do it right, if you do your call to actions, if you follow all of the guidelines and what you're supposed to do, then you will be able to get people to see you noticed you and they say, Oh, yeah, I noticed you, you know, I get emails from people that say, Oh, my God, you were thinking what I, you're saying what I'm thinking, I need to work with you. So that's the kind of, of reaction that you want to get. And there's a way that you can do that through using YouTube. So whether it's for you or for your clients, it's beneficial to anybody that has a business. Period. Absolutely. Yeah. Um. You just hit on so many important things there. I absolutely love it because I find that you're absolutely right. It is difficult for VAs to get the message out about what they can do. And, you know, as a VA, you might be thinking, yeah, I don't know that YouTube is the place they're going to find me. Well, think about you. How often do you go and find stuff on YouTube right. and you figure out how to do something? Right. The clients are the same way. They'll find you on YouTube and then go, oh, here's my solution. And don't so. just think about, um, are they going to find me on YouTube? It's the reality is YouTube is owned by Google. So if somebody is searching on Google, if your video, depending on the industry, the nation, all of that kind of stuff, your video can actually be pulled up on the first page of the regular search results, but also it's going to be found on the search page for the video search results. Now, the reality too, that a lot of people need to pay attention to is there are more uh, people who prefer to look at a video than to read. So if you have a blog versus if you have a video, they're gonna go, let me go with the video because that's gonna be faster and easier. And especially if you're showing them and giving them actual tips and things that they can, you know, really digest better through a video. So don't just think, oh, well, somebody has to physically come onto YouTube in order to find this video. They just have to Google it and they'll find it. And the, the key thing that you need to do is to make sure that you're typing in all of the metadata, which are the keywords and all of those things, so that it can get found. And as long as you're doing that, then you don't have to worry about anything. Fantastic. So Edie, um, what is your favorite thing about working as a virtual assistant, as a video specialist, as a YouTube specialist? What's your favorite thing? 
or favorite things, if you want to name more than one? Hmm. Well, like I mentioned before, my favorite thing is I love to edit. So if I could just edit every single day, um, I'd be fine. And I, I do like that because it, it does pull on my creativity. And that to me is the only time that I can really be creative is when I'm editing. So that's my number one favorite thing to do. I think my second favorite thing to do is to work with someone who was sort of like, ambivalent about using videos or about using YouTube. And I was able, (laughs) I was able to help them understand the impact and then allow them to see what the impact of using videos has done to their, their business. And so I think that's been probably my most rewarding. I I really enjoy that um, also a lot. And you seem to really enjoy your lifestyle because you get to travel a lot and still run a very successful business. Yeah. And that, that is obviously the perk of being a VA. Um, I, we usually travel at least once a year and we'll usually um, go up for sure to our family in Canada, but then sometimes we'll, we'll travel internationally or go out of the state of, of New York And when I go to Canada, I just take my computer with me and I don't have a laptop. So it's a little, you know, I, because I edit, I have two monitors. So I have one monitor here and and my computer there. I don't take the whole thing, but I take my main computer with me and I'll just, if I need to do from there, I'll just do work. So it's really easy and convenient um, for me to work from, you know, Canada if I have to. So to wrap up, I'm going to have you say one more time where people can connect with you. And then let's also put those links in the comments there so that people can yes. connect with you in a million ways. But go ahead and say it in case they don't see don't, don't see the comments. Okay. Um, well, in- to see what products I have and what digital services I offer, you can go to virtuallyinsync.com forward slash new hyphen services. So on that page, you're going to see, um, I actually have a workshop that's wrapping up this week and I'm going to be doing it again, but it won't be a live workshop. It'll be a digital workshop. So I will let everybody know when that's available. And then you can see all the other services that I offer, which include the YouTube channel manager that I told you about. And then I also have a monthly SEO um, service where I will upload all of your videos for you and optimize them on a monthly basis. If you or a client of yours is interested, I do have um, a service right now where I'm offering as a bonus a welcome trailer that I will edit for you. And you can learn more about that by going to bit.ly, that's B-I-T dot L-Y forward slash embrace YouTube bonus. And then if you are interested in getting paid to refer clients to me, which I think should be good for everybody, then by all means, post down below that you're interested or post your name so that I will know to send a text message to you through Messenger and I will get you enrolled in my affiliate program so that if you recommend your clients to my program, you'll get paid when I get paid. So I will type in, I'll type in everything um, in the comments as well. Okay, fabulous. Edie, this was amazing. I Thank know. you for sharing all this great information. You're welcome. Community. And Edie is part of this group. So you guys, uh, she's here to answer questions, to connect with you on any level you want as we go through. If yeah. you think, oh my gosh, I want to hear more from Edie Clark, let us know and yeah. we'll have her back again. All right, cool. <laughs> Thanks, Edie. Thank you so much, Kathy. This has been great. Bye. Bye.